All right, let's talk staircase stringers. And with this, we're going to talk about codes and terms. All right, so over here on the left, I've got a set of IBC codes that apply to building a staircase. The IBC stands for International Building Code. Now, if you have local codes that supersede these, you make sure you check your local codes. All right, so the first one we have is the maximum riser height, which is seven and three quarter inches. The riser is this board right here that will fill in the back so you can't see what's underneath or underneath the stairs. All right, it's just measured from the top of or the bottom of this tread to this tread. Okay, second one is the minimum tread depth. Minimum tread depth by a code is 10 inches and it's measured from the nosing of one tread to the nosing of the other tread. So that distance there has to be a minimum of 10 inches, not counting the overhang. The third one we're talking about is minimum clearance width. That talks about the width of your staircase. If you're building this staircase inside a house, it has to be 36 inches clear. So that means it's got to be 36 inches from the sheetrock to the sheetrock when you get done. So when you frame the stairs, you have to frame them for 37 inches because you're going to have a half an inch of sheetrock on each side. So make sure that you get the total for 36 inches on your staircase. The next one is minimum landing depth. The minimum landing depth is three feet and the landing depth is measured from the end of your stair stringer out and that depth has to be three feet. Okay, so you can't put anything, the wall, if there's a door or something, it would have to be three feet from the end of your staircase so that when you get to the bottom of the stairs, you have room. Okay, the next one is riser height difference. Now, when you're cutting out a staircase, you're, it's not always really accurate. Your marks might be off, your cutting might be off a little bit. So the distance for your unit rise, this one may differ from this one, and it may differ from this one. So they're not gonna be, they aren't gonna always be exactly the same, but code says that the maximum difference can be three eighths of an inch. So if this one, let's say, ends up to be seven inches, and this one up here is seven and three eighths, that passes code. But if one at the bottom of your stairs is seven, and then you've got one further up at the top, let's say the last one you measured it wrong a little bit or something and it only came out to six and a half, that will not pass code. They have to be three eighths of an inch from between the smallest and the largest. That's the biggest difference between them. Okay? The next one is the maximum vertical rise. If this distance, the total rise, exceeds 12 feet, then you have to have a landing somewhere along your staircase. So that vertical rise cannot exceed 12 feet. That would make your stringers way too long and I guess they decided that they're going to break it up if it got over 12 feet. Okay. Next one is solid risers nosing. So if you have a solid riser like this, then the nosing has to be somewhere between three quarters of an inch and an inch and a quarter. The nosing is this little bit of overhang right here that comes out past the riser to the end of that tread. That is the nosing. If you have a solid riser like it's showing here, that distance has to be between three quarters of an inch and one and one quarter of an inch. All right, so the next thing, center stringer needed. 
When do you need a center, a center stringer? If your staircase is more than 30 inches wide, you need to have a center stringer. So if you're building a 36 inch staircase in your house, you have to cut three stringers. Okay? If you're using a material other than inch and a half material, let's say you're using one inch material, then you would have to put in a center stringer to give it some support, otherwise it would be too bouncy. Okay? So just remember, if you're going to build a 36 inch staircase, you have to have that center stringer because it exceeds this 30 inch minimum for your stringers. If you're going with four feet or five foot wide stairs, again, check your codes to make sure that you might not need a fourth stringer underneath those stairs. Okay? Now, some of the other terms we talked about. Total rise. Total rise is the distance from the top of this floor to the top of this floor. And this number is going to be used in your staircase calculations. The total run. The total run is the distance from the back side of this stringer to the end of the stringer down here. And that, again, will be used in your staircase calculations to find out where this landing, or it's going to land at the bottom. Okay? Headroom. All right, how do you measure headroom? Headroom is measured from the tip of the nosing, so that would be this green line here, the tip of the nosing, to the lowest point over on this other floor. So in this case, it's going to hit that point right there. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to this line. So these two lines are parallel. And then I'm going to draw a vertical line. And then that distance is going to be 6 feet 8, or in inches, it would be 80 inches. That has to be 80 inches. If it is not, then you have to scoot your staircase back, make it a little steeper, so that you have 80 inches of headroom. All right? Another term up here, we have stairwell opening. That's the distance from this face to this face. That's where your staircase is going to go down through the floor. Okay? All right. Over here, we have some other terms. Stringer. Stringer is that board that's cut out to make up the supports on your staircase. The unit rise. The unit rise is the height from this, the bottom of this tread or this cutout area here to the top of the next one. When you do your calculations, that's what you're figuring out. You're figuring out what the unit rise is. It's usually going to be somewhere around 7 inches. Okay? The unit run. The run is the distance from this cut to out here. And again, that is determined. Some people like it 10 inches. Some people like it 10 and a half. Some may, if for circumstances, may be 11 or larger. So that is pretty much determined by who's ever drawing the plans or whatever you like. All right? Nosing we've talked about. That's the part of the overhang. The tread is the board that goes on there. The riser is the board that goes on there. We have our tread width, which we explained earlier. And then over here, when you cut a stringer out, this is called a cutout stringer. The distance from this notch to this point has to be at least four inches. If it's smaller than four inches, then you get a really weak area right there, and you really don't want that because over time they could crack. All right, so minimum four inches distance from there. Now, if you want to reinforce a stringer, you can take a two by or something else and nail it across the bottom, which would strengthen that. But still, you need to have a minimum of four inches between this cutout and the bottom of your stringer. So that's why most people like to use a two by 12 for their stringers because it gives them at least four inches distance from there, from this point to that point, 
and then it meets the code. So those are the terms and codes that go along with residential staircase. Another video we're going to show you how to lay out stringers and also calculate stringers for staircases.